Have you ever wanted to build a craftsman kit and thought they are all too hard to build? In this video series, I will be building Fisher Fuels, which is a railroad kit by Jimmy Dignan. I will step you through some very basic steps to achieve some awesome results. Hi, I'm Darren from Model Railroad Techniques. My YouTube channel produces how-to videos for the beginner modeler. If you follow these steps, I will help you build your craftsman kit. The skills you will learn can easily be transferred across to any craftsman kit you choose to build. So let's get started. Make sure you subscribe, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon, like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique. The first step in the tar paper roof is to make the medium up for it. So what I've got there, that started out as a, a black piece of A4 paper. Then I just got a rattle can, which was a, a grey primer in colour, and then dusted the, the colour over the top. Now you can see I haven't done a solid colour there, and that'll become relevant later on when I show you the rest of this process. The next step is to cut the individual strips. Now what I've got there is the steel rule and a sharp new X-Acto blade. The thickness of my strips that I'm using are approximately about 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter in metric terms. So what I'll do, I'll cut probably half a dozen strips the whole length of the A4 piece of paper uh, all ready to be installed. So there's one of the, the cut strips there. So the next step is to put it on a block of wood. So what I'm starting to do here is to really weather it up um, using some sandpaper between a, a four and a 600 grit sandpaper. So what you, the process here is to put it over the, the block of wood on the edge and just start teasing the edge. So the block of wood you wanna use is something that's reasonably new. So what it does, it just starts weathering up the, uh, the edge and fraying up the edge of what will be the, the tar paper. The reason this, this technique is so effective and the reason why I like it so much is because the tar paper when it's brand new is going to be black and over time the weathering, the, the elements hitting, hitting the roof and the like, it obviously goes probably more of a grey colour. So you sort of start in reverse. So you can see I've got some more sandpaper out and then just it starts adding some real variation in the, the colourings through each individual strip, strip of the tar paper. So it's uh, quite an effective uh, little process as you'll see as we start gluing it all together onto the roof. Last step for the aging of these uh, individual strips is basically what I do, I, I get a, the X-Acto knife out and just use the very tip of it. So what that actually does, that scratches it up. So obviously be very, very careful there. You can see I've just stabbed myself with the exacto blade. So it just frays up all the edges and just adds that next level of detail to it. So it's just a matter of you want to, I'm sort of going somewhere in between with how much weathering I'm doing on mine, but um, I've seen some of them uh, use, some modelers use this technique, I should say, that uh, really, really hack into it that uh, gives a real weathered effect, which looks really nice. Let's install these these strips on to the actual building. So like all roofs, whichever way the water's gonna fall, you always start down the, on the bottom end. So you're probably wondering why I'm just using a normal strip for the first layer. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want the cardboard showing underneath. The other option is obviously you can paint the roof your gray color, but I find it just easier to use the, I just glue a normal strip unweathered to the first layer. So it's a matter of running a bead of cloth, just be very careful not globbing it out like I just did, and then just smooth it out nice and evenly. So the first level or first layer of what I'm gonna call the weathered strip, as you can see, I just glue it straight in over the top. So where I've gouged it out, we now have the scenario of it's just a nice gray color that sits underneath. So as I said, you can either paint it or go through normally. Um, like I'm doing here. So that's the, the finished product, what it looks like. Um, I'm quite happy how that's come up. So each layer, you probably overlap by at least half the, the thickness of the strip. So if you want to do more or less, that's fine. And then obviously we'll go back in and do some weathering at a later stage. Initially this build had a shingle type roof as you can see, so the colour that it came with was sort of a very similar to what it is there, sort of a bony sort of off-white colour. Now I tried various techniques that um, I, I learnt to put uh, the tar paper as you can see there and I just wasn't happy with the way it came up. 
It is the first time I've done shingles like that, so I'll have to go back to the drawing board and work out a better way of doing it. As you can see, I, no matter what I sort of did to it regarding the weathering and all that, I just wasn't happy with the way the colouring came along. So what I ended up doing is ditching that whole roof together, all together I should say, and I went in and put a corrugated iron roof on, so I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing was to cut the corrugated iron sections there. Is So the product I'm using here is NJS models. Uh, they're actually made out of copper these little these little sheets so i'll put a link below um, to that that website so if you want to go and have a look at it so that color there that i've used is a sort of a, a mid gray primer and now once that dries the first thing i look at doing is i give it a quick wash with a vallejo oxide red the oxide red uh, wash I don't put over the whole sheet as you can see. I sort of just uh, pick my parts that I do it. So just be mindful of this. I will sort of work towards what is going to be the bottom of the sheet because uh, that's where obviously the most amount of corrosion and dirt and grime will accumulate. The next part of the corrosion process is the sponge painting. So I use a burnt umber, a burnt sienna, all by Americana and a raw umber. And the final colour I use is like a, a, a yellow ochre type colour. So at this point in time I get a, a coffee container lid there, you'll just see at the top of the screen. I just splod uh, all those four colours into it as my sort of my wet palette so to speak. So that amount of sheeting is not for this whole build. Uh, the other ones have been sprayed and actually been drying at the time, hence why I'm doing it this way. But what I'll do, I'll, as I said, splodge them all out and then I'll work through each individual sheet with each colour which will give it opportunity to dry properly. So the, the first step I do is with the, the sponge, I always start with the darkest colour and then work up to the lightest colour. So it's just a matter of splodging on as I'm doing there, sort of working more to the bottom of the sheet because that's um, predominantly where the, the rust and dirt and crud is going to sit. And it's probably um, important to point out, particularly at the bottom, particularly the raised corrugation, you need to make sure that you get it into the sort of the valley part of the, the, the sheet. So that's the uh, the finished sheeting. Now I probably just need to add a little bit more of the ochre to that I think, but the, the look I'm particularly after is quite heavy corrosion and dirt and grime towards the bottom. Hence you couldn't, can sort of see that I've really graded it down. Um, as I said, you start with your darkest colour, you sponge that through, go through all your sheeting and then go to the next colour, next colour and then as I said, once it onto the building, you'll see me later on in this in this video actually go through back with the ochre and just highlight some of those uh, some of those tips. Now we're ready for the installation of the sheeting. So the first lot row, I always use the sort of 3M type, um, what they call transfer tape. You can uh, see it in picture there. So what that actually does, that helps me just to get that first line nice and square because it's very important you get that square for the subsequent rows of the sheeting. That first sheet is in and nice and square. It's just a matter of depending on how much overlap I've got sort of one hip and valley overlap there. It's just a matter of going through. So I'm making sure it's square with the sheet to its left and also nice and square to the bottom. Now depending on whether you're going to put gutters on your um, your structure or not, which this one doesn't, depending on how much overhang from the, the side of the roof you do. So it's just a matter of doing that process, going all the way through till you get to, to the end. So you can see I've marched ahead and done the whole other side. The reason I've done that, I just wanted to show you the battens I had to put in. So you can sort of see them, they're, they're the white battens that run across. So that was just a, a thin piece of strip wood. Now, the reason I did that is what I was finding, the second row was just not lining up properly. I'm not sure why it was. It wasn't due to the, the shingles that run underneath. It's just, for whatever reason um, that I can't explain, just wasn't sort of sitting nice and flat. So. 
I did some research and found out that some of the my German modeling friends, they sort of put battens in there and it's, it alleviated the issue regarding getting the, the sheet nice and flat. So you can see uh, how I glue it up. I just put a bit of Elmer's glue on the batten. Then I put some on the top of the flutes of the sheet underneath. And then also on the sheet that I'm adding there, you off camera I actually put some glue on the overlap sheet and then just push it down nice and hard. Next part of the build, we need to build the ridge cap. So I use what is the Etchmate 3C there. I don't think I actually get them anymore, but I will hunt around and I'll put in the description below what I find. So it's just a matter of cutting a piece of very thick aluminum foil. And that's the, the little jig there. So what it actually does, it's got three anchor points. I measured halfway down that little piece of strip that's gonna end up being the ridge cap. And then you are to put it in the jig and you bend it over. Once it's in the jig and nicely secure, it's just a matter of grabbing the, the little tool that you get given with the, with the kit and just prying it up ever so slightly to the desired angle. The installation of the ridge cap is quite simple. Uh, once you get it out of the jig, it's just a matter of using some more Elmer's glue and sticking to the top. Now, the reason it's not weathered before putting it up there is because I thought I would damage it by trying to do any sponging technique so I decided to install it for so that's now the the ridge cap uh, installed in situ. I won't go through the exact way I did the weathering on the ridge cap because it's exactly the same process as the rest of the roof. So it's exactly the same four colours and then it's just a matter of working through. And Here I'm adding a little bit of pastel chalk, so a, sort of a dark grey there just to try to blend the two in. So I just wanted to work in some colours. It's not doesn't really come up all that predominantly on the video here but in the actual model in the real in real life is actually uh, quite significant but the key probably here is not to go overboard so the last little bit of this episode two is me weathering up the tar paper whilst i was editing this i realized i hadn't really shown that so as you can see i've just added some some roof detail at the top there a pallet a few bits of weathered wood and some other sheets of corrugated iron so what I'm going to do is now those sort of are in place, I'm going to use like a sort of your, your dirtier tones and your rusty reds type thing. I'm just running beads down um, in a, a vertical fashion to sort of emulate what to, some water running through those areas and just picking up those colours um, of those particular items as they run over it. So you can see this next part of the weathering, I'm pretty well putting in a, a line the, the length of that whole roof. So. As you can see, the iron above it is obviously very rusty, so the years of weather, uh, rain comes down that roof because it's got no gutter. It's just going to pick up all the all the colourings and just drip down and then just run. So um, it's a little bit stark right now, but I do go back into it and sort of soften that tone up a little bit. So the other powders I'm using are the rusty reds, dirty browns and the like. So they're all from Micromart, I'll put a link below. Also I'm using a bit of uh, Vallejo pigment which is the, the dark oxide or the, the black colour. The other colour I'm going to go in with is, is uh, Vallejo pigment which is uh, like an oak, a yellow ochre colour. So that's the probably the end of the weathering. I don't, didn't want to go sort of overboard with it. As you can see I've sort of picked up some rusty type colours. Um, along those all those rips and tears and all that. I'm quite happy with it at this point in time. Probably a little bit more needing it along where that line is probably just a little bit too red, but we'll uh, we'll keep working on that. So at this point in time, that's the the end of the video. So thanks for watching. So the next episode is going to be on doing all the little detail pit bits and the the wooden barn doors at the front of this structure. So we'll see you next time. 
make sure you subscribe click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos support us on patreon like us on facebook and instagram at model railroad techniques